Welcome to this lesson. In our previous lesson, we looked at classification. And we define it as a process where living organisms or living things are sorted and put into groups based on their common characteristics or features. In this lesson, we're going to look at classification in biology from Aristotle's perspective. At the end of the lesson, we have one objective of identifying the role of Aristotle in biological classification. Now, Aristotle was a Greek philosopher and uh, mathematician um, who lived between the years of um, 384 to 322 before Christ. And he made numerous contributions in the world of maths and science. And as far as biology was concerned, he played a very key role in taxonomy, in classifying living organisms. So from Aristotle's perspective, mentioned that living things or living organisms were grouped into two. They were grouped into plants or animals. So according to him, a living organism is either a plant or an animal. The plants, he grouped them further into three. They are either herbs, shrubs, or trees. This is how he grouped the plants. Now, he mentioned that this classification was as a result of their appearance and size. So differences in the external appearance and size of the animal largely determined whether they were herbs, shrubs, or trees. Now, if they were small in size, then they were more likely to be herbs. And if they were large in size, then they are trees. If they are midway between being small and large, in which case we are saying they are medium, then we classify them as shrubs. So these were the herbs. So the grasses, or the green, low-lying or creeping plants of a sort that are small in size, we refer to them as herbs. Then the shrubs are the medium-sized plants that tend to have one growing um, cycle in one season, in its growing season. And it's largely characterized by just being around the knee or the waist of an adult. So relatively medium in size. The branches are not as thick as the stems of trees, and they're also not as thin as the strands of um, outgrowths in herbs. In trees, they are characterized with having numerous growing cycles in each season. And they're also characterized by having a large woody stem with numerous branches and equally numerous leaves or more. Then it's the chief characteristic in here is it's large in size. So this is how he classified plants. The animals, he classified them based on the way they move. So the first one is the movement. So the animals that um, largely flew, moved on land, or walked, or ran, or hopped, and those that um, largely moved in water by swimming. He looked at all these different ways the animals moved and classified them as such. Then he looked at their habitat, how the Habit, uh, the animals move was movement, but where they live refers to their habitat. Again, this was largely related to the movement. So animals that lived in water, he mentioned he referred to them as being aquatic. Those that lived on land were terrestrial. And those that flew in the air and 
largely perched on trees or give birth and nurture their live young in nests or within trees in the air, we refer to them as being arboreal. So as far as the three name goes, we have the arboreal, the terrestrial being on land, and aquatic in water. Then finally, he classified organisms whether they had red blood or not. So the final classification was the presence or absence of red blood. And these were the main um, criteria he used in classifying animals. Their movement, their habitats, and the presence or absence of red blood. In this lesson, we looked at classification in biology from Aristotle's perspective. He classified all living organisms as either being plants or animals. The plants, he classified them as either being herbs, shrubs, or trees, largely depending on the size. The animals, he classified them by the way they move, where they live, their habitat, or whether they possessed red blood or not. In our next lesson, we we'll look at classification and continue the discussion in classification in biology. We'll see you in the next lesson.